Due to return to the stand to answer questions about his state of mind, Brevik has admitted killing 77 people in bomb and shooting attacks in Norway last year. But he's pleaded not guilty, saying he acted in self-defense against the spread of multiculturalism. Nick Spicer sent this update from Oslo. I'm standing outside of the courthouse in Oslo, where later today Anders Bering Breivik will try to tell the people in the audience and the judges that he is not insane. Whether or not he is insane is really the crux of this case. There was one psychiatric evaluation that said he was a paranoid schizophrenic, and that last July 22nd, when he killed 69 people, he was undergoing a psychotic episode. And then a second psychiatric evaluation ordered by the court said that he was not criminally insane, merely severely narcissistic. Breivik has already said it would be the ultimate humiliation to be called insane because it would take away the political meaning of his actions. He considers himself to be a political activist who undertook the mass killing to wake up the Norwegian population to the dangers, as he sees it, of an invasion by Muslims and Marxists across Europe. Let's go back to one of our top stories, and that's Pakistan's launch a little earlier on of its latest medium-range missile, and get some analysis on this topic. Let's bring in from Islamabad, Raja Ghulam Mustaba of the OM Center. That's a foreign policy think tank. Thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera. So is this missile test by Pakistan a direct reaction to the one that was conducted last week by India, the Agni-5? Uh, thank you for having me on your program. And uh, I would like to say that uh, before today, Pakistan fired uh, their uh, nuclear missile. Basically, it is in response to what India did a few days back when they fired their Agni-5, which is an ICBM. And what they have fired is that that has raised a lot of eyebrows in the region. Some people say that it was not appropriate for Pakistan to respond at this time when there were two-way talks going on. But if the two-way talks were going on, then India should have felt more responsible and not fired any such uh, nuclear missiles, which are ICBMs. Right, and, and the since there are talks India going on, fired, and since there, are, take, a, since there are talks going on, as you're saying, why are these tests being carried out at this particular time between both India and Pakistan? Is this the start of uh, something in the region? You see, why they're being carried out this time is the choice was with India. If India had uh, uh, behaved more responsibly, Pakistan would have not responded in this manner. But since India has played this card, then Pakistan had to respond, and then they carried out their test today. And Pakistan's uh, response at this particular time, do you think that it's uh, being nudged on by other countries that it has uh, close defense ties with? Or is it all Pakistan's choice to launch it at this time? I see you see, what Pakistan is doing, because Pakistan has to take all appropriate measures for its own defense. At this moment, the region is very, very, very volatile. India is uh, embarrassing again and again uh, with the American administration, because India seems to be not listening to America. Had India constrained from firing their missiles, Pakistan would have certainly done so. But if India does not behave, then do, people should not expect Pakistan to not to respond, you know. Will we be seeing more test launches from Pakistan, in your opinion? Uh, say again? I'm asking you if we will be seeing more missile test launches from okay. Pakistan in the short-term future. You see, the test launches will keep on happening as long as the technology is being perfected. So this the missile that they fired today is a much more improved version of previous uh, uh, Hatab 4 or Shaheen 4, that they, they call it. It has improved range uh, specifications. It has improved its uh, accuracy in t uh, terms of target hitting and uh, its uh, flight uh, stabilization, etc. You know. So Pakistan will continue to carry out its tests as when it wants to perfect its technology in a better way and keep an edge. Raja Ghulam Mustaba, who we've just lost. I apologize for that connection, but we got the gist of what he was telling us uh, from Islamabad. The retail giant Walmart has been accused of paying millions of dollars in bribes in Mexico. The company has grown rapidly since its launch there, but the allegations of corruption have now raised questions about its business practices. Al Jazeera's Frank Contreras reports.
A corruption scandal of mammoth proportions. Following an investigative report by the New York Times, allegations have emerged that Mexico's largest employer, Walmart, paid some $24 million in bribes to facilitate the company's rapid expansion in Mexico. The company has grown 470% here in the last decade. There are more than 2,000 Walmart stores now operating. Facing possible charges and a public relations disaster, Walmart has created a new executive position to root out corruption. The company says the alleged bribery happened six years ago. If these allegations are true, it is not a reflection of who we are or what we stand for. We are deeply concerned by these allegations and are working aggressively to determine what happened. Company insiders in Mexico say they expect senior Walmart executives may be forced to leave their jobs. On Mexico's presidential campaign trail, at least two major candidates are demanding a full federal investigation. For its part, Mexico's federal government says land.